If you read comments on TikTok, you probably think I got myself in a lot of trouble a couple of weeks ago because I posted this video about beef tallow. That video went viral on TikTok and Instagram, probably on YouTube here as well. And the comments were overwhelmingly negative, calling me uninformed, blaming dermatologists for avoiding natural remedies. And so on today's video, I'm gonna explain my position when it comes to beef tallow. We are gonna talk about the benefits of beef tallow, the potential drawbacks of beef tallow, and clear up some of the misconceptions that I saw in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Dustin. I'm a board certified dermatologist with my own practice in Boise Idaho and I create videos on social media here on YouTube to help support my cause of going out and providing free dermatology care to as many people as I can primarily underserved populations who wouldn't be seeing a dermatologist otherwise I have a mobile clinic that I pay for to go out and provide charitable care so when you watch these videos it really helps to support that mission thank you for being here starting out what is beef tallow beef tallow is rendered fat from cows from beef products and it is high in saturated triglycerides like palmic acid, oleic acid, and stearic acid. So these are very similar to some of the components of your sebum or the natural oils that your skin produces. And people are all on the craze about this because it is natural. And they are also trying to avoid things like chemicals that they claim are ruining you in the commercially available product. I really look at beef tallow as this generation's coconut oil. I can remember in my training five to 10 years ago in early practice as well, where everybody was using coconut oil to brush their teeth, to wash their skin, to treat their hair. And a lot of that has fizzled out at this time because some people saw benefits, but many people really ended up going back to the products that had been working for them before. And I ultimately think that beef tallow will follow the same trend, but it is certainly having a moment. Now, just because it's natural doesn't mean that it's better but some people certainly will find benefit from beef tallow and some of those benefits are that it is high in triglycerides and free fatty acids things that are good for your skin as we age our skin produces fewer ceramides fewer triglycerides fewer free fatty acids all of these things that are part of your moisture barrier and that's why elderly individuals tend to have more dry skin problems than younger individuals some people have reported that they've had great success with acne with rosacea with eczema psoriasis and many other skin diseases but by and large these are anecdotal reports and for every person that you can find claiming beef tallow was great for their skin you can also find people claiming that it was bad for their skin and we're going to talk about some of those drawbacks here shortly to lead off with the purported benefits of beef tallow it is rich in triglycerides which are similar to the sebum that your skin produces and can have a moisturizing effect another purported benefit is that it is rich in vitamins a d e E and K. If you ask why those ones, well, these are fat soluble vitamins. So when you eat these vitamins, your body stores them in the fat. And so even in your own fat, you've got a little bit at least, you have fat soluble vitamins that are being stored there for use in the body. Now these fat soluble vitamins that are present in beef tallow are at varied concentrations. And that is one of the potential drawbacks of beef tallow is we don't know how much of these vitamins are in any particular batch. It's going to vary from batch to batch because they're using different animals to produce whatever batch they're working on. Also, just because it has vitamin A in it, there's no evidence that that works at all similar to a retinol that we would use, which is a synthetic form of vitamin A. We don't have any evidence that shows that these fat-soluble vitamins are actually getting into the skin and causing any significant changes. We use and see beef tallow being used primarily as a moisturizer. So if you're using beef tallow because you think these vitamins are getting into the skin and doing something good, well, there's just no evidence to back that up. There are some small studies on beef tallow showing that in a moisturizing property, it has helped individuals with eczema, psoriasis, or other dry skin conditions, but this evidence is really pretty weak. It's small studies and small populations and not necessarily replicatable to large populations based on the evidence that we have currently. Which brings us to some of the drawbacks. And the first of those is comedogenicity. Is beef tallow gonna plug your pores? Well, it is considered comedogenic by many people who have used it. For every person that you find online that has benefits from it there's also somebody else claiming it clogged their pores and ruined their skin so if you're only looking at one side of the data you're just cherry picking I simply want to present to you both sides that some people love it 
some people hate it, which honestly goes for many commercial products as well, but it is largely considered comedogenic, and as dermatologists we see that frequently in our clinics with the boon of people that are using it now. Even comedogenicity is hard to judge because the old models just don't necessarily replicate to humans. They used to use rabbit ears and, and different methods, so we don't test in that manner anymore, and it's not always applicable to humans when something says that it's non-comedogenic, because certainly just about any product, you can find somebody that says it plugged their pores and uh, somebody else that says it didn't. So the biggest risk that I see with beef tallow is contamination. These don't have preservatives in them most of the time. There's nothing in there to stop bacteria or other microbes from growing. And this is an animal fat, just like many oils can go rancid over time. So can beef tallow. And without preservatives in there to prevent that, if this product is sitting on your bathroom counter for months and months, it does have a risk of going rancid and then you're throwing away product that you've paid for. Whereas many commercially prepared products that have have preservatives in them can be shelf stable for years without risk of contamination and introducing microbes to your skin. We do have to address the greasy texture and aroma. Yeah. You smell like beef and cheese. You don't smell like Santa. I've seen tons of people online talk about how using beef tallow made them smell bad because it does smell like you're just working at, as a fry cook and you don't want that on your skin. Some of the products I've had people tell me they don't smell. And why is that? Well, they're potentially preparing it in a different way. And oftentimes they're using things like essential oils to mask that fragrance or to give it a more pleasant fragrance. And essential oils and dermatology have a very strange relationship. We don't like essential oils in many cases because every dermatologist can share with you stories of patient after patient who has had a terrible like poison ivy level contact dermatitis from the use of essential oils. So this is a new problem that you could be introducing to your skin instead of using a fragrance-free commercially available product. Another drawback is that beef tallow does not offer any sun protection. There's people out there in the camp of beef tallow who are also very anti-sunscreen. And if you're putting beef tallow on your skin and going outside, you're increasing your risk of burns and that is going to be damaging to your skin. There are some companies that use beef tallow as the base in a zinc-based sunscreen, and if you like it and that works well for you, by all means, I'm okay with you using that, but you need to be informed, and it is important to protect your skin. You're not going to become vitamin D deficient under the real-world use of sunscreen. I'm not vitamin D deficient and I use sunscreen every single day. I also like the sun. I get outside in the sun all of the time and I take reasonable precautions to not get burned and honestly that's what I advocate for. I don't mind a little sun exposure earlier in the morning when the sun is low in the sky. I think that can be good for you. It can be mood boosting. It can help set your circadian rhythm. But don't get burned when you're out there. Lastly about beef tallow, there's really just no standardized evidence for its efficacy. Again, we talked about some small studies, but on a large scale, most of these small companies have not done clinical trials to show benefit in large groups of people, and the batches can vary from month to month or year to year. So you don't always know what you're getting. You could be introducing essential oils or suffering from a bad smell. There's lots of drawbacks with beef tallow, but ultimately the purpose of my video here today is to just give you both sides of the argument so you can make an informed decision because the thing that I like least of all is fear-based marketing where somebody's trying to scare you into using a product because they're telling you that the other products are just simply bad for you, that they're endocrine disruptors, that they're full of chemicals, and that's not the truth. When you look at the data, you have to understand the data, and I'm trying to bring the data to you. When they make claims about endocrine disruption, it's not applicable to humans. We don't see that in humans, and I can do a more deep dive on that. If you want, just let me know down in the comments. What I like to recommend in the clinic are products that are mass market, commercially produced, that are easily available for many people to get, where they're getting the same product Product at a reasonable price, often that is fragrance free. And when they buy it today and they buy it a year from now, they're getting the same product that's going to treat their skin the same so that they don't have to worry about contact dermatitis from things that have been working for them and then something changes. When dermatologists make recommendations, we are often recommending moisturizers that also have triglycerides in them, that have free fatty acids, that have ceramides and other hydrating ingredients like glycerin or urea. I did a whole video on urea just a couple of weeks ago where people were advocating using urine on your face and trying to scare you away from using commercially available products. Even though there are some with urea that are much more effective than urine, and again, you're gonna deal with the smell if you're putting urine on your face. 
We like these ingredients with proven benefits that are consistent from batch to batch and often that are studied. And we are able to look at the studies, the clinical studies, the trials that are done that show improvement in skin barrier function, that show decreased water loss, that show protection from external pathogens. All of these things help to give us confidence when making recommendations to our patient. Now, I do want to address a couple of the comments that I got on my video and a couple other things that I saw when people were selling beef tallow on TikTok shop. The first comment is when doctors can't profit. This was on my video. They've got the eye roll emoji and the truth is I recommend over-the-counter moisturizers 99% of the time. And when somebody goes to Target, Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, wherever, I don't make any money when they buy that product. So this is a logical fallacy in my mind, because unless you are buying your moisturizer from the dermatologist, there is no profit to be made there. We're recommending products that work and that may complement prescription products, which we don't get paid for either. So this argument is garbage. Let's talk about chemicals. Oh, so instead of using something natural, let me guess, you want us to use lotion stocked with chemicals. Well, this may come as a surprise to you, but palmitic acid, oleic acid, stearic acid are all chemicals. They have a chemical structure that you can look up. Just like any other ingredient in any other moisturizer, when we look at the ingredients, they are chemical structures. Water is a chemical structure. So simply to say it's a chemical shows that you're just not educated on the topic and this argument doesn't really carry any weight to me. Another comment just about the chemicals and I had to throw in this one that was funny because the person said that beef tallow broke them out and made them smell like a quarter pounder. Again, if you want to cherry pick data, you can find something that supports your side. I just want you to know both sides. Here's an argument that I find interesting. If you can't eat your skincare, then why the f would you be putting it on your skin? Should you be eating your skincare? Absolutely not. The purpose of your gut and the purpose of your skin are different. The cells are different. They both have some barrier function, but the gut is supposed to be bringing things into the body. And I generally don't recommend you eat a spoonful of fat anyway. Beef tallow french fries are not a whole lot healthier for your overall metabolic health. Eating straight beef tallow isn't either. So when we look at this argument, your skin and your gut are different. The cells are different, they have different functions, and they do different things for your overall health. So to treat them the same is not necessarily a good argument. You can make that argument that beef tallow has some benefits for the skin. You could potentially make the argument that it's safer than certain other oils that your food is cooked in, but understand that they can also have drawbacks. Two things can be true at once, but ultimately your skin and your gut not the same thing and don't have to be treated the same. Here's one more. Don't use tallow for your skin because it doesn't really have any health benefits. It's what your dermatologist is gonna tell you because they don't make any money off of you using this. We've talked about the profit incentive before. What I did notice on all of these videos is so many of the videos advertising these beef tallow products on TikTok shop were using the exact same script. So they are putting in a TikTok shop link where they make money from it. And the question is, have you followed this person before? Do you know that they've actually been using this product for months or weeks or years? Is it actually transformed their skin in a good way or does it just have a good commission and they're following a script to get you to buy something? Again, do your research and make an informed decision. What I want you to get out of this video today is understand that beef tallow can have some benefits to the skin. A friend just let me know this morning that they use it, but only in the winter because it's just too much for their skin in the summer. It does have some hydrating properties because of those triglycerides in there, but it does come with the potential for some drawbacks, which can be the odor, the introduction of contact dermatitis through the use of essential oils, or potentially it could go rancid over time and spoil because of the lack of preservatives. It may also be inconsistent from batch to batch. Knowing those things, if you want to use it, by all means you can, and you can support the companies that do well for your skin. If you've seen benefits from beef tallow and you like to use it and it's reasonably priced, by all means, go ahead and use it and even promote it on your TikTok shop if you believe strongly enough in it. But for me and my patients, we're gonna continue to recommend and use commercially available products that have studied ingredients with clinical data to support them that are fragrance free, that are consistently good for patients with eczema, sensitive skin, rosacea, acne, psoriasis, and many other skin conditions. I've got a basket down in the video description of some of my favorite moisturizers for the face and the body. If you wanna check those out, those purchases are an affiliate link and do bring a little income into me that I use to help support that mobile clinic. I hope you found this instructional and educational that you can make better informed decisions. Don't rely on fear-based marketing to make your decisions and leave me a comment, share this video with somebody else if you have found it helpful and I'll see you guys next time.